I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello everyone, I'm speaking with Rebecca again. This is the second part of uh, the chat that we started previously. Now we were we were talking about, you had the second encounter where the, the smaller creature ran by, and then we were talking mm-hmm. about... Um, you, you went to the school library and checked out Ivan Sanderson's book to uh, find out more information. Right, that's correct. So, go, yeah, ahead. Um, <clears throat> go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, go ahead and, and just uh, continue on from that point. Well, <laughs> so when I saw this book, it just, it just kind of describes, you know, uh, uh, the state of my mind and the fact that I had no knowledge of this creature and, and, and didn't, you know, I was really shocked to even find this book. And when I found the book, I saw a picture on the front cover is a picture of this, you know, big, hairy, you know, creature, you know, uh, I think it was, I think the drawing was on top of a mountain and, um, and I, and I looked at that and I was like, what? You know, and I thought, what is that thing doing? And, and I was just astounded when I saw it. Right. And, and I kept looking at it, and I thought, so, and I sit down, and I, I'm trying to take myself back to that point. And I was just, I was just shaking. I, I remember I was just shaking, and I thought, that's what's in my backyard. That's what's around us. And then I thought, what is that thing? You know, because in my mind... You know, I'm thinking, okay, there's two of them, but I'm trying to figure out how it got down from the Himalayas <laughs> all the way to to my house. And I really thought that. And it, you know, and it's funny, I can laugh about it now, you know, but I just, you know, I had nothing, I had no, nothing to reference back to anything. I'd heard no conversations, no TV shows. I had no knowledge of any creature, and I didn't even know. And I thought, and there's a book on this thing, The Abominable Snowman. I, That's what it's called? Yeah, I had exactly the same reaction after my sighting. Um, I hadn't seen any books, and there wasn't much on TV back at that time. And a friend of mine who who ended up writing John Green without my knowledge uh, about what happened, what mm-hmm. I saw, gave me three of John mm-hmm. Green's books. And I, I was astounded. I didn't know there was that much information. And then later I ended up finding the very same book in our school that, that you checked out. And I thought, wow, there's, <laughs> I didn't realize anybody knew about this stuff. Yes, yes. And the thought came across my, my mind too. And I thought, okay, then these people in the, who live in the Himalayas, these people who live out there know about this thing and, 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 and it lives out there. And now you know, it's in my backyard and I'm just like, no. And I'm like, that's why I'm seeing all these footprints out in the, you know, that's why when my family first moved here and we went, walked across the street and we saw all those footprints and it's like, it belongs to that thing. That's where those footprints, you know? Uh And, uh, and I was all alone, you know, kind of all alone in it, you know? And uh, years later, I won't get into that because I'm probably not going to have time, but, um, I found out later on, years later, that my father must have had some type of an encounter or knew because of an incident that happened. And my mom had seen some things that she had never told me for for many years that happened. And one of them was my horse. <clears throat> I was going to school and, and I, I had a Tennessee walker and he was 16 too, for those who, you know, know about horses, pretty tall. And he, she actually saw him in the pasture. He's standing by the fence, and he bolted and jumped straight up in the air and landed on the other side of that fence. Good and this Lord. fence was just just under six feet. Yeah, the the yeah, <laughs> it jumped straight up in the air. Something had scared the living daylights. And she told me that she used to see faces in the trees. And I said, Mom, I said, Why didn't you tell me? And she goes, I don't know. She goes, I didn't want to scare anybody. And I'm wow. like, Mom. 
you got to tell me, please don't do things like that, you know? Yeah, she just kept a lot of stuff to herself. But, um, yeah, so in, in any event, I knew at that point that this was serious, that there was a monster of some sort, a creature that looked really frightening and really angry mm-hmm. and something that could do a lot of harm to a person was in my backyard and had a baby. <laughs> Wow. Oh, man. Now the baby. Well, the, you know, and I thought about it later, you know, and I thought, okay, I'm sitting on, I'm sitting, you know, on the floor, Indian style, and I'm, and I've got this, this, this one that loped past the window, you know, it was in my sister's room. And that thing, though, he was chunky looking. He was husky. Mm-hmm. And dad was just huge. I mean, this, this thing was massive and thick. And, this little guy was was like a carbon copy of him, only much smaller, but he was husky. And I thought, you know, probably more than likely, just because I was in so much shock of seeing it, it's possible, you know, I'm sitting on the floor and the distance between the floor where I was sitting and the window and then where that thing was, um, the little guy. So he probably was close to six feet tall, I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. And I was calling him a little guy. But he probably was close to six feet tall. Yeah. So, still smaller that, than you know, Dad. I'm looking back on the... Pardon? Still smaller than Dad. Oh, way smaller than Dad, because when, when I had that, you know, when I, when I turned around and it was looking at me through the window, it was it, it, it was slightly leaning under at me because I was, you know, I'm looking at his face. I'm looking in his eyes, and his head was just under the eaves of the house. And so even though that little planter box thing was there, that thing was only like a foot and a half or two feet, you know, wow. from the house outward. And so it, it was right there at the window. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking my, I think in my face, you know, <laughs> couldn't have been more than, I don't know, I'm going to say roughly two feet, mm-hmm. two feet. I mean, I, that's why I thought I was going to die that day. And, and, and he looked mad. He didn't look and he was piercing. His eyes were just piercing. And I, and I just, I, I don't know. It was just, at that time I was terrified. I was traumatized. Um, and and then I knew what what I was dealing with and I, and it just, it just just scared me to death. Every, every day, you know, I prayed and asked God to protect me every day that I was, because I didn't want to lose my horses. I didn't want my dad to get mad because I didn't want to go out and feed them, feed them. And, um, I finally got to the point where, you know, it was, it was a little easier, but I was still terrified looking around me all the time, every time that I went out there. But, um, each day that I didn't get grabbed or you know hurt oh, or wow. you know you know you kind of start you know you, you start thinking because there's something you want to do so bad you know and you and you know you got to feed those horses you know and so it's like it, okay well it, it didn't get me this time okay well nothing happened that time you know but you just got this creepy feeling like you're always being watched mm-hmm. and uh, and that was the feeling uh, around that property all of the time and then <clears throat> there were three incidences where the horses ran were run through the fences. They ran through the fences. We had one of them was really bad. We had to call the vet, and uh, my my Tennessee Walker had a gash um, along his neck and uh, down on his chest and uh, one of his legs, and it was it, it was a huge vet bill and wow. had to give. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you're you know, you're left with having to give penicillin shots every day and the vet bill is huge and you know you're sitting there trying to figure out why on earth would my horse, you know, run just run through a fence. Well, something scared the living daylights out of him. Oh yeah. You know, to the point where he had to escape and the, and, and it literally it had probably had to have been close. You know. Yeah. I'm thinking. So. And I'm and, and I'm thinking that they came in the pasture, inside the pasture. I think they were inside the pasture because there have been many times that, you know, horses do run at night, and then they they can run at night, you know what I mean? But when you're hearing those howls and all of a sudden you start hearing your horses run all over the place, you know, making a, making a fit, you know, it starts making you wonder, you know, is there something out there? Yeah, there's something You know, chasing on. the horse. So there was three incidences that had, that, that happened over, you know, like, 
I'm, if memory serves me right, I'm saying three times in a two and a half year period. That happened like three times. My dad was getting really upset about it. He was starting to talk about selling, you know, the horses and stuff because the vet bills were just Mm -hmm. getting expensive. And, you know, I'm crying, no, please don't sell my horses. And so anyway, um, there were other incidences. We were, you know, our family, I think it was when I was 15, and it was in the summer, and it was really hot. And my dad liked to play cards, and he was trying to teach us how to, you know, play I can't remember what it was, hearts. Heart. Anyway, there was a, a, a game that he, he liked to play, and he was trying to teach us kids. And so we were at the kitchen table, and all the windows were open. And this was an older house where, you know, you had these little levers on the windows, and you would lift the lever up and then just push the window out. There were no screens or anything. And he, my dad went all around the house and opened up those, all of them, you know, because it was hot mm-hmm. and he wanted air and it was dark out. I mean, I can't remember exactly what time this was. And I'm thinking it was somewhere around nine thirty or 10 o'clock, you know, and in, in that somewhere in that we were, we were allowed to stay up, you know, and so we were really excited for the fact that my dad didn't, didn't make us go to bed early, but <clears throat> on the Saturday and we were playing and all of a sudden we heard just a sh- shrieking scream like it sounded like something between a cougar and a woman screaming Mm -hmm. and within probably a minute and a half we were getting this banging on the door and it's a neighbor and she's you know going did you hear that did you hear that you know and um you know i'm trying to tap on my mom i'm like mom mom it's that thing i know what it is it's that thing i'm trying to talk to this lady you know and i just you know me i just cowered back i ran to the inside of the house and i'm you know trying to lean up against the inside wall where the kitchen is you know i didn't want to get near any of the windows and i was just like shaking and uh i knew what it was well my dad got the idea that some woman was being attacked you know, out in the woods across the street, and he made my dad, my brothers, um, get their motorcycles, and they spent an hour riding through all that county, those trails across the street, looking for the woman that was being attacked. And I kept telling mom, I said, mom, mom, it's that thing. And I kept getting the weirdest feeling, and I have nothing to base it on, and I, I never saw anything to prove it, but I kept feeling like that thing was standing like over next to the house just maybe behind a tree, just watching. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was across the street at all. It was right there. When that scream happened, it was right there at the window, the same window where I'd had the sighting. And that scream, it was just piercing. So, yeah, upset the neighbors, and they were trying to figure out what was going on. And, and of course, my brothers and them never found anything. And uh, so that was an incident that... kind of stirred everybody up. And then uh, there was the incident about, you know, my brothers were camping, and they decided that they were going to go camp with some friends and pitch a tent across the street. My dad told me they could. Gave them flashlights and water and a lantern, and, you know, they're going to have this fun little overnight camping trip out there. (laughs) And And here I was again saying, Mom, Mom, don't let them go out there. Don't let them go out there. There, there, There's something might be out there, you know. And I was always getting in trouble. Rebecca, you better stop that, you know. And um, so they came back. It was on a Friday night. And they come back the next morning pretty early. And they were mad. And the the boy, uh, one of the boys took off and went home. And the other boy came with uh, my brothers and came back to the house with the camping equipment and the tent. And they were in the house. And my brothers were actually mad at my dad. And they were like, that is not funny. And I'm standing there in the kitchen. And I'm turning around. And they're like, and, and he goes, son, what are you talking about? He, goes, we, he says, don't give me that. We know what you were doing. We, you kept us up all night long. Why would you do something like that? We were out there trying to have fun. And he goes, son, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't come out there. He goes, Louise, tell him, I, 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 I've been here with you. And she goes, yeah, your dad's been here. He didn't go out there. Yeah, right. Well, what, what happened? Well, something was stomping around. You were stomping around. And we know that it was you and trying to, trying to scare us and hitting the tent and throwing rocks at the tent. 
and and um, making these growling sounds. We know that was you, Dad. You know, and I just in my in my in my heart, my heart was just racing. You know what it was, and I knew what it was. But you think anybody of them? They're not going to listen to me. You know, I tried to tell my mom. You and I kept getting in trouble, Rebecca. You know, stop that. You're you're, you're going to get yourself in trouble. You know, you tell your dad this kind of stuff. You know, you, you're going to scare the kids, and you're you're going to stir stuff up, and you're you're going you're going to find yourself in trouble. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, whatever. I know. And but in my heart, I'm like, great. So the thing is out there now terrorizing my brother is one night they go out there and they're there. So then I'm starting to think, how many of these things are really out there? Is it is it just these two doing that or or what's going on? You know, you know, I'm trying to figure things out and I could never make sense. Like, where are they coming from and why are they? coming around us you know well i'm sure the fact that my dad was you know feeding deer in our backyard with alfalfa and you know and you know deer was showing up all over the place i'm sure that was some type of a an attraction but you know we like i said before that ever happened or before my dad decided to do that i was hearing stuff outside from the very first night that we moved in that house. I mean, it started from the beginning. And they were there. They were there before we were ever there. Mm-hmm. And I'm convinced, that, I'm convinced that the owner of that house, who took thousands and thousands of dollars, a lot, off the price of that house um, in order to sell it to my dad and get out of there. And I think they probably had... You know, encounters. I'm sure a good reason to want to dump the property. <laughs> uh, yeah, because because I think if I remember right, my mom told me they took something like thirty five thousand dollars off the price of the house. Good my Lord. dad was trying to negotiate with them. Yeah, they took like thirty five thousand dollars off the price of the house, and they wanted out. They just, you know, told my dad they're just they just wanted to get the house sold. You know, if that's an agreement, you know, fine. And so, that was a yeah, lot of money they. Back I mean. Very, very, very significant, very significant, you know, amount of money, you know, and and my dad thought he had gotten this deal deal of the century. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember my, uh-huh. my dad paid twenty eight thousand dollars for the ten acres that we lived on in Graham, so that's a significant amount right. back then. Significant, significant, yeah. And the house, the house. Uh, let's see. I know that I know that my mom said that the house had been built in the fifties. I don't know what year. Mm-hmm. But it was it was it was fairly it wasn't that old when we moved in it. Right. You know, because we moved up in nineteen sixty two. We moved up into that house. <clears throat> we just missed that Columbus Day storm. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, we had just missed that Columbus Day storm. And I remember we were we were trying to get over to the property when there was just trees down with roots. You mean it was the bad. whole whole tree? Huh? Yeah, it was bad. Oh, I re- I remember that. Even as a seven year old, I remember how there was just stuff down everywhere. Oh yeah. But, uh, anyway, so you know there was that, and uh, <clears throat> my brothers never went out, back out there again. Um, my dad was very adamant to them. Listen, you guys, I didn't go out there. I, that was not me. I don't know who was out there. You know, maybe it was some of your friends, you know, trying to mess with you guys. No, because nobody knew, you know, it just, it, it just came down to that. So the conversation kind of ended, but my brothers never did go out there again, which I'm, I'm happy about that. Uh, and then when I was uh, 16, I'm pretty sure I was, I was 15 and a half or 16 years old. Um, I, I was allowed to have a somewhat of a boyfriend, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that could call me. I could have phone calls. I couldn't go out on dates or anything like that. But I, if he came to the house, he could spend time, you know, with the family, you know, mm-hmm. there, you know, that kind of deal. <clears throat> and so in any event, I was on the phone and 
the phone was a corded phone, you know, back then it was connected to the wall and that, and that, and it was right next to the back door. And my dad and brothers had cut, you know, a couple of cords of wood and stacked them up against the house. So he could just go outside the door, you know, open the door and get some wood and go back in the house and put it in a, you know, the fireplace. But in any event, uh, I'm on that phone and I'm talking and I'm just chattering away. And all of a sudden, you know, we'll remember the old, I don't even know if they make them anymore, but there was toys. Uh, They're called Lincoln Logs. Do you remember yeah, those? Right, right. You remember Lincoln Logs? Well, I'm on that phone and it sounded like a hundred Lincoln Logs. Just like somebody took a swipe and just, and they just went flying and it had that wood sound, you know, where, where we, I literally heard all the wood at one time go flying. Good Lord. And I'm on the phone and I'm like, I gotta, I gotta go, I gotta go, you know, and I, and I hung up and I, and I said, Mom, something, and now my dad worked swing shift, and so he wasn't even at the house. We were alone. My mom was alone with us in the house. And uh, <clears throat> it was raining really heavy. And I said, Mom, did you hear that? You know, and she was like, "Yeah, what was that?" And I said, "I don't know. I'm free to look out the. I'm free to look out the window, you know." And uh, so she went over there. And I'm like, "Mom, don't look out the window, you know." Mm -hmm. And so she goes and she looks out the window and she goes, "What?" And I said, "What's the matter?" And she goes, "The wood's gone. It's all over the place out there." And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, Mom! Somebody, something's going on." And I said, and so she called the police. So she calls the police and a police car shows up, a, a unit shows up and they had two, two officers in the unit and they came to the door and they listened to what she said and they said, okay, we'll be right back. And they had these two flashlights, their, their police flashlights. And they went out there and they're out back walking around probably for about five minutes. I'm thinking five, six, seven minutes. And they come back and they were looked really disturbed in their face, their face had, you know, they, 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 and they were looking at my mom. They said, um, ma'am, he goes, uh, we, we found some strange prints out there. We don't know exactly what we're dealing with, but um, what we want you to do is lock up all your doors and windows and lock your front door. And uh, if you have any other, you know, any incidences or anything else happens, don't hesitate to call us. That's what I heard. Good Lord. And so my mom, like, <clears throat> yeah, so my mom shuts the door, she locks it, and uh, the next thing we know, the, we hear t the two car doors shut, and I'm thinking within 30 seconds, this cop car in our driveway, it was in our, we had a circular driveway, and all of a sudden we hear their wheels start spinning. He turned the car on and literally spun out of our driveway and took off. Wow. So, of course, they never called or contacted my mom unless maybe it happened at school or maybe they showed up and they never told me. Mm -hmm. But I had never had any knowledge of them ever coming back or calling my mom or talking to my dad saying, look, this is what we saw. But, you know, doesn't it kind of strike your curiosity why? I mean, there was gravel flying everywhere. You know, it was interesting. Uh, the... And I think it was from John Green who told me years ago, back back in the mid-'70s when I met them, that um, the Pierce County Sheriff's Department, when they got a call about an incident like this, they carried a, a large-caliber rifle with them. So there must have been a, a fair amount of knowledge, you know, by the, the officers at that time. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I, I, I'm glad you, you shared that with me. Uh, I didn't know that. I never knew that. I just know that they got in the car and turned it on, and then all of a sudden they just they tore out of there, just gravel flying. And I'm like, wow. You know, it still left me wondering if they had seen something. <clears throat> but, you certainly, know, to this day, I certainly sounds. I like don't it, know. It? <laughs> <laughs> it, it does. I mean, if you use common sense, it's like, what, what, what reason would they have? Well, you know, and, to tear up somebody's right. Yeah, and you think about the proximity in, in terms of time. You know, the wood was thrown about not too long before they got there. Um, you know, they go out and look around, they right. see the footprints. You know, so it's mm -hmm. very possible they saw something. 
Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that's what I think. I do. <clears throat> but they, I wish that they would have contacted my mom back to tell her, you know, because I, I, I've been I've been waiting for years, years to be vindicated. I, you know, I kept hoping that maybe the neighbors or somebody would come up there if they did see something and say something. And I think that my dad did see things and never, ever, you know, came to me and said, Becky, yeah, no, everybody was just closed mouth. Nobody would talk about it. And then there was the camping trailer incident. Oh, um, yes. uh, that one, that one gives me shivers to this day. I mean, when I really sit down and think about it and I try to go back and you know what I mean? It's, it's like, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, it just put the hair on my arms. But anyway, so that was the incident I think I told you about earlier. <clears throat> and I was 16 and, you know, you get these things in your head, you know, and my, my dad was so, was so, uh, strict and there were times that you just wanted to get out it's like can I go just go someplace can I go out with my friends can I go sleep overnight or something you know and and finally he he relented because the neighbor lady you know to our right um her she had a daughter about our age and invited my sister and I my sister Roxanne and I to sleep over in the camping trailer that was in their backyard now, the only thing that separated their backyard from ours was uh, a small picket fence, and one of the slats were gone, so there was an opening. Okay, so I'm just setting the stage with this. <laughs> so, and then, and then my, brother, <laughs> my brothers were on the other side of the house. Now, the house that was on the other side, you had to go, oh, I, I don't know, 300 feet, 350 feet, something. It was, you had to go through this little strip of woods and up this hill to this house on the hill and they were invited with the guy that was their age to have an overnight. So my dad just decided, okay, you guys can, you boys can spend the night up there, you know, and the girls, you know, uh, Becky and Roxanne can spend the night over here, you know, with this neighbor girl. We'll just get this all out of the way. You know what I mean? And they can all do it in one night. Okay. So that's fine. And my sister and this, girl Renee went to bed and they went to sleep finally and I'm just sitting there thinking and I'm thinking I'm gonna sneak out I'm gonna sneak out I'm gonna go and, I, and I'm and I'm thinking but what about that thing and and if I convince myself well they're not even around anyway I'm probably being scared for nothing they probably don't even know I'm here I mean what would they do you know I had all this stuff going through my head and I'm like I'm gonna go through that was nothing's gonna happen everything's gonna be fine those things are probably far away and somewhere else you know I told myself that and so I I snuck out of that trailer at exactly at midnight and shut the door now that door to that it was open it was unlocked it wasn't open it was it was unlocked and I left it unlocked so I could get back in. <laughs> and I, and I snuck down through that slat and I'm like sneaking past my dad, you know, yeah, through our backyard, you know, and my knew my dad and my mom were sleeping. And I went through that little strip of woods hurriedly, I might add, and, uh, and went up the hill. Well, I found my brothers and they were all sitting up there talking and I'm, I'm hanging out with them and I'm talking and everything. And finally, you know, I, I'm thinking it must have been around 1 or one thirty, something like that. And they're like, you know, being boys. And they're like, well, say, okay, you can get lost now. And I'm like. <laughs> nice guys. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, they they were always mad at me anyway because, you know, my dad was trying to teach him how to, you know, build a motor from the inside out, you know, from mm-hmm. the bottom up. And I kept trying to go in the garage and learn. I wanted to learn how to put a motor. And they're like, get her out of here. You know, they're always irritated with me. And so I went up there, and anyway, they let me hang out with them for a while, and they are like, get out of here, you know, just, you know, you're messing up our night. You've been here long enough. And I'm like, okay, so um, can one of you guys walk me down the hill, you know, just walk with me down the hill through those trees, and then, and then I'll do the rest. We're not walking you anywhere. And I just stood there and looked at him. I go, what do you mean? Get out of here. You know, you brought yourself here. You get yourself home. And I'm like, no, I can't. I, come on, you know, I, I, walk me down the hill. You know, and I argued with him for like three or four minutes. And I just stood there and I thought, I can't believe you guys are going to make me walk down that, not even walk me down the hill, you know. And they're like, no, we're not. Get your, get out of here. So I, I'm just standing there and I'm thinking to myself, because I'm starting to get this weird feeling. And the hair is starting to 
stand up on my arms and I'm thinking, I'm just scaring myself. I'm scaring myself. It's going to be okay. I'm just going to go down the hill, you know, and, and I, and, and I'm telling you, I walked down that hill and I started into those woods, that little strip of woods that led to, you know, spit me out into the backyard, my, our backyard. And I get halfway through the woods and I take a step and I hear a crunch behind me. Oh. Can, can anybody even imagine what I felt at that moment? And I'm and, and, and it was like there's a little vibration that goes to that crunch, you know? Mm-hmm. And and I and I up for a second and I was like, What's that? And I just stood there. I just totally stood there motionless. And I thought to myself, Okay, it, it was just nothing. I don't know what that was. I'm just, I'm just, you know, just, just go. I'm telling myself, just, just go. And I, I take like two more steps, and then I hear another crunch behind me, and then I knew. Mm-hmm. And then the horses start to run. Then the horses start to running. And I'm standing there, and I'm like, no, I, I, I made a big mistake. I made a big mistake. What was wrong with me? This is stupid. You know, and here I am praying again, asking God to send angels, you know, to protect me. But, and I'm like, I'm like, it's stupid, stupid. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, God. I don't want to be drugged out in the woods and never be seen again. You know, I don't want to die like this. I have, I'm, not, I'm still a teenager, you know, and I'm talking to God. You know, please don't let this thing hurt me. You know, and, and then I'm saying to myself, I remember my dad, you know, he was always telling me if a wild animal starts following you, do not run. Mm-hmm. That was one thing he always told us, do not run. And so I started telling myself, just walk, just start walking, put one foot in the I mean, I'm literally feeling that same sensation where the blood is starting to leave my face. And I got the hair standing up on the back of my, on my arms and the back of my neck. And I, I'm walking, I'm taking one step scared to death in front of the other. And I'm thinking, telling myself, you're, you're going to make it. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And I could hear that thing walking behind me. Now, so far, it hadn't grabbed me. And I kept saying, the thing that scared me worse was when I had to squat down, knowing that thing was somewhere behind me. I was scared to turn around. I didn't want to turn around because I didn't want to come face to face because I thought to myself, I'm going to faint. I'm going to faint, and then it's going to take me away somewhere. And I wouldn't turn around. And that's, that was hard. That was really a hard experience for me. And so I, I squatted down, and I slipped through that little that open slat, and I grabbed that little camping trailer door, and I just literally bounded into it and turning around at the same time, kind of a Yu-Gi-Oh moment, I'm telling people. And I pushed that, that lock down. And, I mean, it hadn't been more than a second or two that I pushed that lock down on the, when I was in the inside of that camping trailer, and it started pushing and rocking that camping trailer back and forth. And, I mean, this thing is rocking back and forth. My sister wakes up. This girl, when they wakes up, the neighbor's uh, daughter, and they start screaming. And I'm screaming. And we're all screaming. And this thing just keeps rocking. At one moment, at one point, I thought it was going to push that trailer over. And it just kept going on. For me, it felt like, you know, it went on for a couple of minutes. But I'll bet you 10 to 1, probably it it was only like 30 or 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. But it... You know what I'm trying to say? When something's scaring you that bad, it feels like an eternity oh, absolutely. when it really wasn't, you know? So, and then all of a sudden it just stopped and it never happened again. But I guarantee all of us were awake the whole night. Good Lord. And, my, and, and, and yeah, yeah. And all that happened when daylight hit, um, the, the girl wanted out. She wanted to get in the house with her mom and and my sister, you know, was mad at me. She was mad at me because she felt like I had something to do with what happened when she found out that I had snuck out. And I begged her. I said, please don't tell mom and dad I'm going to get beat, you know, this kind of a deal. But she was so mad at me. And she goes, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I don't want to talk about this incident ever again. Don't talk to me about this. And she didn't. She was closed mouth until 
I think the first time I got her to actually open up and talk to me about it was three years ago. Three years wow. ago. That's a long time. It's a, it's a long time. She and, and what did she say to me? She goes, and you too, you brought that thing. You were the one that brought that thing there. <laughs> And I said, "Oh, so you're admitting? So you're admitting it's real, then, huh? You're admitting you finally you're finally admitting to me because that was an admittance." And she just looked at me and gave me this look, and then looked away. And I'm like, "Uh huh. You guys all know more than you ever told me. Everybody wanted to keep their mouth shut, and nobody helped me out by you know backing me up, you know." But uh, that's what I was wondering. My sister they, passed. by this time had they admitted that there were these creatures around there? Um. Uh. My. My sister, kind of in a brown about way, admitted to it. Yeah, my mom finally started telling me about the faces, you know, that she would see looking through the branches at her a lot when we were gone to school, and you know, all off and on, clear up until even just this last year, she has seen things and not told anybody. And I'm like, oh, gone it, mom. What are you? What are you doing? Why can't you tell me what? Why would you keep something like that to yourself, you know? Wow. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's still stuff going on because my 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 sister, my little sister, who moved from Kentucky to come and help, she kind of, she's taking care of my mom because she's 91 and my mom, you know, needs help now. Mm -hmm. And so she's living there and um, she started calling me and taking pictures of imprints. Oh, wow. Um, and broken branches and stuff. Oh yes, in our backyard, you know, or in her backyard, mm -hmm. um, and sending them to me. And I was like, wow. I mean, they're still out there. They're still out there. I don't know how many. I don't know, you know, if it's just the, a different generation of them, or if, you know, if there's a few of them, or there's a lot of them. Well, I can't tell you. I'm just saying that, you know, she sent me pictures of impressions, some of them were as small as six inches, and there were some 13 inches, and there was one that was like 17 inch. I, I'm not you surprised know, so. at the proximity to Fort Lewis, and, and that's an area, the training areas aren't used that much out there, so. Right, uh, and I used to I used to ride my horse alone out there, and I've had, I've had a couple of things that scared me, and I had <clears throat> my sister, my older sister, um, had a horse and that would only uh, could only use a hackamore on her because you couldn't put a bit on her bit in her mouth um, and uh, so, so she rode out there one time and she had this horse that was really hard to handle to begin with and not very well trained my dad had bought her from a from a um, an auction and in any event she she ended up almost getting killed that horse almost killed her because she comes ripping home, the horse is flying across the, the county land and runs p past the house to the pasture, and the, and the fence was the only thing that stopped that horse. Uh, and my, when my sister got off, what had happened was she was out riding in the reservation, and they went, she went past this clump of trees, and she said a, a dark, hairy arm jutted out of, uh, out of it, and the horse reared and took off with her. Holy cow. And she said she nearly fell in. And the horse was so scared. The horse was at a dead run and ran all the way. And at that time, uh, Fort Lewis was not fenced. Ran th through the opening that we always used. R ran across Mountain Highway into that, um, you know, county land across the street. Ran through there and, and took her, uh, jumped the ditch and ran across the street, a uh, 224th with her. And, and then, like I said, didn't stop until, you know, she was in our backyard and the fence stopped her. Yeah. Wow. So there, there's that. And that was in the Fort Lewis, you know, that was in Fort Lewis. Yeah. Military reservation right there. Did she say, I mean, it sounds like it was pretty close proximity to the horse. Was it trying to grab the horse? That's the, well, she, the way she made it sound, I think it was trying to grab her. Oh, I see. Okay. I think it was trying, but you know, it, I can always ask her again, but the way she described it to me, she had the feeling it was trying to get her. It was trying to grab her, and it took the horse by surprise. The horse, when the arm came shooting out, 
a horse rears up and takes off with their bolts, just bolts. Boy, that's and she couldn't stop that horse. That's a frightening experience. Good lord. Yeah, she could. She could. Yeah, she couldn't stop that horse. And then, and then here, you know, she could have been hit by a car, and both of them could have been ki- killed because Mountain Highway. I mean, people back in that day, very busy, and you know, this was a time. This was an era where a lot of the high school kids, you know, dads and moms were buying, you know, the classic muscle cars. Oh, yeah. This was the era of the muscle car, you know what I mean? This you, you, There was muscle cars everywhere, and there was a lot of racing. Mm-hmm. There was. Yeah, there was a lot of racing on that road, and there's a lot of racing on 224. Oh, yeah. And, um, and, you know, then there was the trucks, you know, the big trucks and all that stuff, you know. So it was literally, I think, an act of God that saved her, you know, from, you know, not being hit to be able to, cr- to cross – that horse at a dead run across that mountain highway and then go into the county land and then bolt over over 224th and get over the pass over that street to the house you know without them all you know both getting killed by a car yeah right i remember they were still so, logging trucks back then oh yes lots of logging trucks there was a lot of stuff going i mean very busy very busy, yeah. and uh, you know there was, no, there was. I don't know if you remember, but there were a couple of deaths. There were a couple of deaths um, on two twenty four. Oh yeah. You know, from people racing. Yeah, it, it was. Cars. It was almost. I hate to say it, a common a common occurrence back then. Yeah, I know it. It, it was pretty bad. <laughs> it was pretty bad. You know, oh, we yeah. used to hear them all the time. And it's, it didn't matter if it was dark. It didn't, I mean, a lot of the racing started when it started to get dark, and then you could just hear them. I mean, it's, it was just on. And racing up that hill. You're talking about going from Mountain Highway, and you remember that, how how you, you turn on 224th from Mountain Highway, mm-hmm. and you start going up the hill. Right. You're going up a slight hill, and then you drop down, and there's a fire station on the other side, and that veterinarian, you know, yeah. Tahoma veterinarian. But anyway, uh, that Tahoma veterinarian wasn't there at the time, but the fire station was. Correct. And um, people were really just crazy it was racing crazy. up a hill. So, yeah, so that happened. And uh, I had been out there with my horse on several different occasions. And um, uh, one time I was coming home, and there was just a huge branch crack. I mean, it must have been probably, I am want to say, 100 feet from me. But, you know, when everything is silent and all of a sudden you realize that there's not a bird singing, mm-hmm. <clears throat> that the air has turned deaf- deafening silent, and all of a sudden a huge branch cracks, that sound just resounds all through the reservation, you know. Yeah. And I remember my horse, my horse jumped. And I had a very quiet, that Tennessee Walker had a very quiet demeanor. He was a very good horse. And, um, and he just jumped. And I thought, you know what, I'm I'm getting out of here. I I don't know what that was, but you know, I kind of hurried up my little pace because I was still probably a half a mile from um, getting to, to Mountain Highway. You know, getting out of there. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I never I never was attacked or anything. You know, I, I mean, none of us were ever attacked. But you know, it made me wonder. It just made me wonder. You know, I felt like I was always being followed by that thing, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, I ended up moving back there, you know, later on after I, I grew up and I, you know, got married and, you know, my dad built another house in the back and offered me to rent the, the house in the front, the same old house that I was raised in, to come back there. And so I came back and I brought, you know, new horses and, you know, uh, I, it was just the same thing, feeling like something was always watching me. And my daughter, Ashley, would always tell me, Mom, I keep hearing branches cracking across the street. And I'm just like, you know what? They're still here. Yeah. They're still here. You know, there's still activity going on out there, you know. Uh, but I don't know how much time I've taken up over here. Um, there was a Tupperware party I can tell you about. And my mom told me after I had left home. And she had gone to a Tupperware party down at, you know where 22nd Avenue? I know you know where 22nd Avenue oh, yeah. is. Sure. Like the church. Yeah, you just turn turn right on two twenty or excuse me, um, Highway Seven, and and you go up just a jot, and there's, you know, you just take a a right right there, and it just shoots off, shoots you to Twenty Second Avenue. Well, up in there, one of those houses right up in there, past that railroad track, she went to a Tupperware party, and there was a lady who uh, apparently had had regular visitations 
from one of these creatures. And she told me the story how there was a stench and the woman kept getting mad and embar- she was embarrassed and she kept apologizing to all the ladies. And she finally got mad. All the ladies were in the living room and there was a window that was open um, in the kitchen. And she, there was a big tree back there. And she finally got mad, excused herself, and went to the window and yelled out the window, knock it off, you know, why don't you guys get lost or something like that, <laughs> talking to the wife. I mean, my mother told me this story, and my mouth was open. I said, what? And she goes, yeah. And she says she slammed the window shut and came back there. She goes, I'm sorry. She goes, they're always underneath my window trying to look in. And I'm like, oh, my God. What? Yeah. So there was that story. So you're, you're talking about a whole area right around that whole Pierce County area like you're talking about. There was a lot of stuff. I mean, I've had people say, oh, well, you know, how come we never heard about it? Well, nobody nobody talked about it. There was a lot of stuff going on right. throughout Pierce County. Mm-hmm. And, I, I mean, I can remember when I was a, a young kid, we lived back behind the Soldiers' Home in Ording. Uh, right now, on, in fact, the Puyallup, mm-hmm. Puyallup River went right through our property. We had 40 acres. Oh, right my there. gosh, yeah. And, uh-huh. and, and we had a couple incidents that I didn't didn't think anything about until we moved to Graham, just, I think, five or six miles away. And I actually saw two of the Sasquatches up there. But, uh-huh. you know, in 1968, we had a kid that rode back. He was about my age, about 10. And uh, he said he saw the rock quarry monster that was trying to get him. Well, I'm thinking, what the heck is a rock quarry monster? I was out there on my bike all the time. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, and the same thing with the cows. You know, one day, you know, cows have a, have a pattern in, in their pastures. You know, they, they're, you, they're pretty predictable. Right. You know where they're going to be throughout certain times right. of the day. Uh, right. This one particular day, it was a summer. You know, we were, I was home out riding my bike like I did on the dirt road we lived on. And my sister, two of mm-hmm. my sisters and my mom were out by the corral. And, and the, all the cows were up there. And they were kind of huddled up around the barn facing out toward the tree line and their ears are out they were really agitated and something my my mom says come over here and look at this and something was just thrashing the brush at the edge of the tree line we couldn't see what it was but it was really tearing the brush up and Mm -hmm. she says well it's probably a bear don't go down there well i had confronted a bear Mm -hmm. out there i mean face to face (laughs) it was after some beehives one time a friend of my dad's had wow and wow we were going down to the swamp to build a raft and and i was in lead you know being the oldest of the three kids at the time and um Mm -hmm. the bear was coming up the trail i was coming down and we met about five feet apart and i just yelled bear and run (laughs) and we all took off so but i didn't think it was oh my gosh you know, we, we hunted, the, my dad and, and a couple of family friends, you know, they and I went with them. We all hunted the bear and, and never saw it again. Uh, so uh-huh. I don't I don't think it was a bear. Then what I learned about the Sasquatch activity, you know, years later, I, I kind of put two and two together. I thought, oh, that had to be what was down there. It wasn't the bear. That's probably why we never saw the bear again. Right. 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 Wow. Yeah, you've had some uh, pre-hair-raising experiences, and, too. And, you know, and you know, I, my, I know. my area from where you were wasn't that far apart. It was only a couple of miles as the crow flies. Oh, yeah, it wasn't. If you, Yeah, if you, exactly, as the crow flies. If you, if you eliminate all the lights and you eliminate all the houses and you just kind of yeah. um, do this grass, you know, like, let's say, from the air... And you start looking at this whole thing. Oh, yeah. You know, it's their territory. You know, of course, I didn't know none of this. It, it took me years of learning and finally going online when there was information and trying to talk to other people and groups that were forming. And I started learning and I thought, wow, these guys really have huge territories. They're huge. You know, yeah. they they can go for miles, sometimes 100 miles, some, I mean, or more. I mean, or they more. just. They're not like we are, you no. know, they're not like we are at, at all, you know, they're, uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I, where are we in this as far as time goes? I haven't really uh, been paying attention. We're, we're starting to run short, but, um, I mean, we, of course, we'll have to, we'll have to record again, but um, was there anything else you wanted mm-hmm. to bring up before we end this session? 
well, there's just so much more. <laughs> I mean, I know we're going to have, we're gonna have to do another another episode, but um, and, okay. and we can, you if you like, later on we could even do a third part. Okay. You know, maybe another. Yeah, if, if you want, to, we because there was there was a different area that I lived in. You know, later on in my life, you know, uh, like in 2006, I believe it was 2005, when I moved to some property in Puyallup, and there was so much that went on there. Oh, well, and, let's, uh, let's do that then, because like I said, we're running short, so let's go ahead and plan okay. for a, a part three, and and we'll because okay. that Puyallup area has always been very interesting to me too. Oh yeah. Oh yes. It's just, it, it, and and when I used to live on 94th Street for you know a couple of years, and then I discovered that I was almost across from the same area where that Puyallup Screamer yeah. was uh, many years ago. You know, I looked that up, and and when I finally discovered that, and I've been reading about it, I thought, wait a minute, that's 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 right out by where you know I'm living right now. You know, and I'm like, wow. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was quite a quite a lot of activity. Right, that it sure was. <laughs> and and those are the same Sasquatches. I ran into two of the three of them. There was three in that group, um, and I I ran into wow. two of them. We found tracks of all three wow. of them in 1972, uh, and then two wow. years later, I actually ran into two of them. Well, I'd love to hear about your experiences. I'd love to see how, how just tell me briefly, you know, before you we we go. How 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 what was those sensations or how did you handle that emotionally and psychologically when you saw well, your first ones or when you started having the you know ran into them? Well, you know, out in that part of Grand, of course, that was right straight down 224th on the other side of Meridian where I lived, uh, mm-hmm. right before you get mm-hmm. to Thrift. And and you know mm-hmm. like like the whole area is very rural and you know, kind of kind of a patchwork of forest and, and pasture land. So mm-hmm. our property was pretty clear, but there was forest on either side. So, um, well, what got me started was in in December of seventy two. I don't know if you remember how cold it was that particular December, but uh, we actually had a little bit of snow on the mm-hmm. ground, and and this would have been right in the middle of the month. Um, I, I remember the day I found out the date uh, a couple of years ago because I remember well what happened. A buddy of mine uh, from Spanaway come over to spend the weekend, and uh-huh. um, we were gonna we got kind of bored because there was snow on the ground, nothing to do. So uh-huh. I said, well, let's go to John's house. My friend John Adams, he lived just uh, oh uh, maybe a quarter of a mile away through the woods we couldn't find the trail through the woods so we had to walk down the road and then hit the railroad tracks and the railroad tracks went in front of john's house so um, we walked down the road and it was really cold it was about i, I i'm pretty sure it was around I, I the figure 17 degrees sticks in my mind from that day i think i do remember that yeah it was really cold that december at least that particular part of the month mm-hmm. so we got mm-hmm. about halfway down the tracks to where we started to john's place and we saw something red between the rails. And the only rails were the only thing exposed. Everything else was snow covered. So we walked up there. Mm-hmm. Now, if you looked down the tracks from, from our perspective, there was a, it was all along, it ran alongside of the hill. And the hill, the upper part of the hill was on our left, and then the downhill slope was on our right. So you could, you could kind of visualize this. And we got mm-hmm. up there, and there was nothing around except this pile of intestines, animal intestines, in between the rails. Oh my gosh. No footprints, oh nothing. I'm thinking, well, how the heck did this get here? And it was the amount that would have been probably the medium size from a medium sized dog or a coyote. So it wasn't something that a bird uh-huh. dropped or anything like that. It was too much. I thought, wow, that's weird. So obviously, nothing, no footprints the way we come. We can see to our right down below, there was no footprints in the snow there. So I told my friend Mark, I said, walk on up ahead and take a look. I'll climb the, the bank on the left here and see if there's anything up here. So I crested this little slope. There were two um, two access roads they built in there the, the summer before with dozers. And on this access road, there were footprints everywhere in the snow. These large, what looked wow. like barefoot human tracks, but they were way bigger than ours. And I hollered at Mark. I wow. said, Mark, come up here and look at this. So he came running up there, and we're standing there with our mouths hanging open looking at dozens and dozens of these footprints all over the place. 
And then it dawned on me, I thought, those intestines aren't frozen yet. As cold as it is, uh-huh. whatever did that has to be really close by. So that scared us. Right. We took off running. And we got to John's house. Like we were fourteen at the time. We we're beating like heck on the door. And and John, <laughs> and John had um, he had two younger brothers and two sisters. So here are all these kids. It was just pandemonium in the living room. And and you know, because we're telling him what we found and everything, and, and his dad come out from the uh, back of the house from the bedroom, and he said, boys, boys, settle down, what's going on? So we told him, and he went and grabbed a forty-five pistol and a camera, and he says, take me up there and show me what you found. So here's this gaggle of kids, you know, we're all up there taking John's dad up there, and he starts ta- mm-hmm. taking all these pictures, and then he starts telling us what little he knew. He probably saw something, I, I think he saw something on television, or maybe saw a magazine article or something once, but he told us, you know, when you tell, uh-huh. when you tell 14 year old boys, there's monsters in the woods, you know, that's the wrong, the wrong thing to tell 14 year old boys. Yeah. yeah. Because we're out there every weekend for weeks looking, never saw another uh-huh. thing. So, uh-huh. so I, and, and what we saw with the footprints, there was a big butt print right at the edge of the slope. And a fist print. I put my gloved fist in it, and there was like an inch all the way around. Oh my god! Uh, oh and, my and, god! And you could see whatever whatever had sat down there had dropped the intestines down over on, on where we found them between the rails. So it kind of you know um, the picture was pretty obvious what was going on there. And uh, so anyway, uh-huh. you know, we didn't. I went home. You know, Mark and I went to my parent my house, and we were excited. You know, telling them what we found. Of course, my my sisters and parents laughed at us. So. Uh, you know, you get made fun of for something like that. You tend not to talk about it anymore. So two years later, um, and I, I don't remember them. I remember that day because I, I remember um, Johnny Nash had the song out at the time. I can see clearly now. And it was, and, oh. and at John's, I used to go to John's a lot. And they always had American Bandstand on TV on the weekends. Uh-huh. And, and they were playing uh-huh. that song. And I thought, I, I really like that song. So I went back and looked up when that show out of Seattle aired that particular performance, and it was December 16th, 1972. <laughs> so, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, but my when I actually ran into two of these things, I, I don't remember. It, it had to have been, I think, around October, because I, I remember, you remember you could kind of gauge when fall hit, because when right. it started getting frosty, right. it, it was usually around, right. around deer season. So it was really frosty. It wasn't frosty yet because this, this was right at dusk. It wasn't dark like you were talking previously in the previous show about uh, uh-huh. how it's kind of twilight where you can see, but it's not really dark yet. Well, my right. my my colleague was just going crazy, barking and stuff. And and my dad, we had a lot, always had a lot of raccoons and skunks and everything that would come in the yard because you know with the dog food, my my sister's cat's food, and the chickens and everything else, we had you know a lot of animals. So. Uh, my dad always said, mm-hmm. well, if some, some animal comes in the yard, shoot it because it might be rabid. So I thought, okay. Now mm-hmm. I, had all, I had hunting rifles and my shotgun and everything. I grabbed, I grabbed a single shot, twenty two and a couple of bullets. Went and grabbed my dog. He was tied up. Um, he liked to roam at night, so we tied him up at his house at night. So um, oh, wow. I, told him, I told him, go get him. And he takes off. Yeah. He takes off around into the neighbor's pasture. There was, and their house was at the other end of their property, so it was all wild up, up on our end. And he heads mm-hmm. straight to the tree line. Now I had that dog thirteen years. He never shied away from anything. He got he got a face full of porcupine quills twice because he would just dive head into anything. He got to oh, the tree line. Wow. He got to the tree line and he froze, with his ears up and everything really alert. And I thought, what's he doing? I never saw him stop it for anything. And I get about yeah. 50 feet or so from him, and he whips around, and he comes running back at full speed past me, heading to the house. And I stopped, and I'm looking at him, thinking, what is that, wow. crazy, what's that crazy dog doing? And he gets up to the porch, and he sits down, and he's shivering. I can see him. I thought, what's he doing? So I walk up to where he's stopped at the tree line, and I could hear something moving around in there. So I thought, well... You know, maybe he learned his lesson with the porcupines. <laughs> maybe it's a porcupine. In uh-huh. there. So I, I, uh-huh. I put a round in the chamber, and there were some low-hanging fir branches, and I kind of pushed through those. And, and there was this big maple tree on the inside, on the other side of the fir trees in there. Uh, and, of course, uh-huh. leaves are really... And this was a big one, probably, you know, three feet across the trunk. 
and all the leaves were mm -hmm. already off and on the ground. And as I got through these tree limbs, I may be 15 feet away from this massive creature. And, mm -hmm. and it's standing there, and it's it's easily two feet higher than me. And and had to oh, wait. Now, I, you know, my dad butchered. I helped him butcher a lot of, a lot of cows and pigs, and we hunted and everything. So I, I had a pretty good idea of what things weighed. And this had to be at right. least at least eight hundred pounds. And, right. And it's when it saw me, it stopped moving. I, it was moving leaves around with its right foot. I could very, I could vividly see that. I mean, I guess because I focused on the movement, and and it had a very, not a very happy look on its face. I mean, now I didn't get a great amount of detail because there was the way the sun had the sun had already gone down, so light and shadows were real heavy. Uh, the shadowing is real high. Right. So I could see more of the lower part of the body than the upper, but I could still, you know, kind of make mm -hmm. out what was there pretty well. Uh, it didn't look happy. It stopped moving and just kind of glared at me. And I thought it was, it was a holy crap. You know, I probably need to change my yeah. underwear moment. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it scared the hell out of me. I'm and, with you. <laughs> and at the same time, you're thinking, what in the hell is this? You know, I mean, I've I've, seen, I've come face to face with black bear in the forest when I was a little kid, and and all kinds of animals. Never seen anything like this. Didn't know anything like this existed. And then the thought hit me, and all this happens, you know, in milliseconds. Was that, oh, this had to be one of the things that made the footprints we found in the snow. And then, mm -hmm. and at the same time, I'm thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? I've I've got my rifle right. in my arms. And I thought, well, the twenty two sure as heck isn't going to do anything to this. But I thought, maybe mm -hmm. if I shoot in the air, I'll scare it away. So I, I fired mm -hmm. I fired the round. Of course, I only got a couple of bullets, and it's a single shot. So <laughs> I hear a noise to my right rear. And I, I'm trying to keep my eyes focused on what's in front of me. And I turn my head just a little bit and glance. And out from behind some brush comes walking this other one. And it walked around oh, me Lord. and over to the first one. My Lord. Oh, my Lord. And that was the time my brain kicked in and said, get the hell out of here. And I took off running, hoping that these things weren't going to be breathing down my neck any second. Yeah, it sounds like it's a good thing you did. And I, call, I called John then earlier. I called him that night as soon as this happened. And I'm kind of quietly, you know, like you were talking about the phones, you know, we had the old cords with the, the that were stuck to the wall and everything and I, I'm standing in the kitchen yeah. my mom's in the living room and I'm talking quietly I said John, I told him kind of what happened and he said okay let's all let's all meet at your house before first light in the morning so there were I don't know I think five of us with our hunting rifles out there and it froze really hard that night so we tracked the two of them for probably a mile or so until you know warmed up enough where the frost melted and we lost the trail but I don't know what we thought we were going to do if we caught up with them, but uh, I doubt, <laughs> I doubt my hunting rifle or my 12 gauge would have hurt them much. Well, you, you have more intestinal fortitude than I could. I, I could never at that point in time when I saw that thing, I thought I'm not even going out. I didn't even want to go, go outside to feed my horses, much less track one. <laughs> well, <laughs> only because it was, there was a group of us and we were all heavily armed. <laughs> well, right, yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think we were That's all just kind of like that. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. I mean, you know, the fear, uh, you know, like you mentioned, uh, you were much closer than I was, uh, you know, even though uh -huh. 15, 15 feet or so is still pretty doggone close. Uh, yeah, I, it is. And I'll tell you, I think I think to this day, the only reason it didn't do anything was because I had a rifle in my hands. Um, I, uh, I, I would, I believe you. I, I believe you. I really think that. Yeah, I believe you. Although, they, I mean, I think that they could have if they wanted to overtake you. But I think also so I have heard of, of rifles and going off and people shooting up in the air and oh, not, yeah. you know, de deterring them. They say don't ever take, you know, a shotgun or a gun or a firearm of any sort out there because they will attack you. Well, I I don't necessarily believe that anymore, you know, well, and I think that you're probably right. I think Here's something. Here's well, it's something we can talk about. We'll have to talk about it on the on the next uh, uh, edition we do of this or next chat because it, there's some stuff I can tell you that I learned about, you know, firearms and these guys. But uh, we'll save that for the mm -hmm. next time. Okay, sounds good.
Well, listen, Rebecca, very fascinating stuff. Let's plan for a third session, and uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, you know, as the week goes by, we'll we'll decide when we can do that. All right, sounds good. Sounds uh, good. Well, listen, much appreciated. We'll chat again real soon. All right, Will. Well, you have a great rest of your day, and uh, and we'll talk to you later. All right, you do the same. Uh huh. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there.